But guys, uh, hopefully your, your team won, or at least your team played well. It was a good game, obviously. Um, there was a lot of uh, uh, great stories, which I always love about Super Bowl. I love the stories about the players, about the teams, about um, the communities that they come from, things like that. So very, very fun to, uh, to, be a, uh, to watch that. Um, quick reminder, Next Level Group Coaching, which is really one-on-one. -on -one. It's, uh, it's, you know, everyone can be in the same room, but it's um, once a month, uh, once a week on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock, we do group coaching and you can hop on, ask any question you want, personal or professional, and it's laser focused, um, solution oriented coaching. It's not about the story. It's not about all the background. It's what do you want help with right now? So we do that every month or every week at 10 o'clock on Wednesdays. And um, I don't know, we've done that for maybe 10 years now. And then this Thursday is Next Level by Association, which is a, a privately hosted event. Uh, you can come once as a guest online or in person. And uh, it's, it's always a great time because we always have great people in the room. And we always online as well. And um, great people that uh, share life share life with so it's kind of a, a fun time but it's also a very inspirational time but it's also a great meaningful conversation so i think that's one of the key things is it's the meaningful conversation that um that people are missing a lot they're they're so tired of just the how you doing life's good what's going on or all the social media posts about how everything's just wonderful when it's really not maybe um but uh, they're just playing their best uh, their best life in front of you and then they're playing their struggles behind so um it's kind of one of those things it's a great great opportunity hopefully you guys can participate in that if you want more information on that just shoot us a message private message me or send a message to haley at everythingnextlevel.com and we'll get you um we'll get you the information on how to attend either virtually or in person um but that being said let me uh let me share something that i think is really um I think it's really important because there's a lot of people that are struggling with whatever, struggling with mental illness, struggling with um, thoughts of depression, struggling with addiction, um, ideologies, uh, all those kind of things. And I truly believe that um, there's, there's something at the root of the addiction part for sure. And, uh, you know, we know that because we've seen it and it's being reported about it and everything else. But let me, let me just um, share a story with you. Several years ago, I was at a <clears throat> Starbucks and I was um, actually, it was a coffee bean. And I was, I was talking to somebody, somebody had called in and I was trying to help them through a situation they were having. And I walked outside and I noticed a young woman following me. She's probably in her thirties. And she said, um, when I got off the phone, she says, excuse me, but I, are you a coach? Are you a life coach, a business coach? What are you? And I said, well, what, what is it that you're looking for? And she said, well, I'm struggling because um, I wish I could get rid of this nasty habit of cigarettes, smoking cigarettes. She goes, um, I just, I just can't do it. And so I'm, I heard you coaching and I thought maybe you could help me with that. And I said, well, let me, let me ask a couple of questions. She says, what's that? I said. Um, have you ever stopped smoking before? She goes, yes. I said, for how long? She goes, about three years. I said, so you've stopped before for three years. Why do you find it so hard now, you think? She goes, I don't know. I said, well, when you were able to stop, why did you start back? Well, I got into a car accident. And during that car accident, um, that I had a lot of head trauma and a lot of surgeries. And <clears throat> I just, I started back once I, I got out of the hospital. And I said, so you started back smoking? She said, yeah. I said, what did that mean to you to start back smoking? She goes, oh man. Felt like I got my life back. That first puff felt me like, felt like I got my life back. And I said, well, until you change that meaning, unless you're trying to commit suicide, the, the idea that you've got your life back by, by smoking cigarettes is probably not going to enable you to quit smoking. 
because in your mind, it's your life is back. She said, oh, that makes sense. And I said, we have to change the meaning of what smoking. I said, you know, have you ever, when did it become acceptable to be condemned to smoking? She said, well, I, I, I guess, you know, I, I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever really thought about it in those terms. I said, well, you wanted to stop, you stopped, you started back, and now you have this idea about smoking that it's giving you your life back. I said, is it really giving you your life back? She was, well, no, it might, no, it feels like it, but no, I, I mean, no, you're right. It's not giving me a life back. I said, so have you ever known anyone who suffered from cancer or lung cancer or emphysema or she's yes my my uncle i said so when did it become acceptable to be killing yourself now that's the law of acceptability that i teach and it says whatever becomes acceptable becomes inevitable and she said no it's never been acceptable i said oh there's a moment that it became acceptable when you decided to start smoking again it became acceptable. And then it got reinforced by the ideology or the thought process, the belief that it was actually giving you your life back. She says, I see that. I said, so do you really want to change that? I said, she said, yeah. I said, we need to change the meaning of smoking to you. I said, is it helping you? No. Is it killing? Yes. I said, have you seen other people like your uncle struggle with it? Yes. What, tell me about the, your uncle. Well, he, he was tied to an oxygen machine the last few years of his life. He just, uh, it was terrible. I mean, he couldn't breathe. And, um, and I said, so is that what you want for your life? She says, no, of course not. I said, is that what you want for when you have children? Is that what you're going to want for their life? No, is that what you're going to want for your spouse? Is that what going to be what you want for your family? No. I said, so what would be the correct meaning that would help you change that. So we spent about, you know, probably 15, 20 minutes out there by the, by the trash can while she was smoking. And um, during that conversation, she took her full pack of cigarettes, brand new, and she just threw them in the trash. And she says, you know, I know that I need to change. And I love the idea that you're telling me that it's within my possibility. And that you're, lo I love the fact that you're telling me it's the meaning that I've attached to it. And so we talked about changing that meaning. As I think about that, it's like all these other people that struggle with things. I mean, look, we all struggle with things. I, I don't know a single person I've ever met that at the root of something, they haven't struggled with something else. And, you know, it's interesting because we get so, um, we get so caught up in telling people, um, you know, what they're doing wrong. We get so caught up in telling people, you know, you should stop this. You should not do this. And yet at the same time, there's a lot of us that are struggling with something else. And I, and I, you know, if it's not that, then it's this, it might be um, a, an addiction to shopping. I mean, it might be an addiction to being lazy. It might be an addiction to playing golf all the time or whatever it is, or it might be just being an addiction, uh, having an addiction to not breaking the cycle of the things you know that aren't serving you anymore. So how is that addiction serving you? How is that addiction that you have to X serving you? I, I love the quote that um, John Maxwell, the great leadership expert says, um, Lord, help me forgive those who sin differently than me. That they just sin differently than me. And I think when we think about that idea that, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's not that um, we can hold them in contempt. We need to hold ourselves in contempt that we are not doing the things that we know we should do. And yet we constantly are looking at somebody else and pointing at what they're not doing. Um, so what I want to ask you the question is, what does your addiction or your poor behavior, it might be not an addiction, it might be something else, your poor behavior really mean to you? And here's, here's what I want to share with you on the, on the option of this. You aren't denying yourself of anything. You are enabling or allowing yourself to be even greater. Let me say that again. You're not denying yourself of anything, whether it's, uh, you know, cake, 
or whether it's a cigarette or whether it, whatever it is, or anger, whatever it is, you're not denying yourself of anything. You're actually enabling or allowing yourself to be even greater. That meaning allows us to change. The other meaning that it's somebody else's fault, it's because it's the way I was raised, it's because um, I've tried before and I can't beat it, whatever it is, that belief system is not going to serve you. So let me ask you the final question, and that is, how is this X, behavior, um, association, meaning, addiction, whatever, how has this served you in the past? <clears throat> And how will it serve you in the future? It might have served you by giving you an excuse. It might have served you by saying it's not my fault. It might have served you in a lot of different ways um, to gain sympathy from other people. Or it may be one of those things that you can change today. Today, today might be the right day, the perfect day to change and say how it's going to serve me now is it's not going to be my excuse any longer. It's going to be my reason. It's not going to be my excuse any longer. It's going to be my reason. So, you know, um, if you're watching this on re replay, I'd love to just hear you chime in. What this has meant to you, uh, maybe, maybe if you want to share something in the past that you've tried to break free of, or maybe something today that you're going to make a decision about breaking free of X. Um, I'd love to, for you just to share it. Uh, it's only going to be on Facebook for uh, maybe a few hours and then it'll go off and it'll be just put uh, aside in our membership group. Our Facebook membership group uh, allows for people to go back and archive it, go back and have a community of people. There's over 106 people in there right now, I think 106, 107, um, that you can go back and connect. And many of those people are great guests of honors of Next Level Wide Association, such as Brian Smith, founder of UG, or um, uh, you know, Kasim Osgood, three-time Pro Bowl player, or um, Keith Keith um, Keith Ferrazzi, who wrote Never Eat Alone, Who's Got Your Back. And we've got so many great people in there. I can't go through the whole list, but I can tell you this, that um, it's the, the association, it's the people that you associate with and how you associate with them. It's not just that you're standing next to them any more than a television has power by being by being left uh, in a vicinity of a plug. It has to be plugged in, but it's really by the association and how you associate with them. So I invite you to look at becoming a member of your next level now and uh, next level by association. Uh, if you want the group coaching, you want to be a part of that, let me know. We'll figure out a way for you to participate in that. And um, Flo, you got any final, got any thoughts about the topic today? Um, always great nuggets. I typed in the Facebook thing. It's always great nuggets. And, um, when you were saying, you know, help me forgive those who sin differently than me, it was about our devotion that we read today about Jesus said it is finished, but he meant that it's finished for all of your past and your and beating yourself up and addictions or whatever you may have. So he paid the price already. Like you have that next level pillar, the price paid. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's what your, your talk reminded me of today. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now I agree. Uh, you know, it's, it's such a meaningful, uh, that quote from John Maxwell, man, the first time I heard it, <laughs> Evan Money and I were talking and he shared it with me. And I was just like, oh, just, oh my gosh. Um, wow, what a powerful statement. And of course, I love John Maxwell. So very powerful to hear it from him. Yeah. Well, the, um, <clears throat> this idea of though that this breaking free of this, these patterns that we've created, poor thinking. Um, uh, I remember a gentleman back in 1985 saying stinking thinking. You know, it's that mm. stink that you have. And mm. uh, there's just so many things that uh, that this, this message kind of reminds me of in my life. Um, things that I've continued to beat myself up for. Things that I've done and gone, okay, well, that's over. 
But was it? Was it really over? Not when I kept repeating it, not when I kept, you know, living it again and in the right. game. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe it was a traumatic experience in your life. Maybe it was a traumatic experience in your family life, something. So I really appreciate that um, flow because I think that's, it's very appropriate for all of us as we watch this. But right. It's easy to beat ourselves up. Easy. It's easy to beat ourselves. And, and it's easy to let ourselves off the hook too. Right. Right. Where we yeah, just go, true. oh, well, that's, that's not my fault. I mean, that's just the way I was raised. Right. And that's my mom and dad's fault. <laughs> Um, that's society's fault look what's going on in society how do you expect me to have a healthy marriage when already 50 of them you know 50 percent are in and divorce i mean we allow ourselves off or we beat ourselves up and the the fine line is saying take accountability for what's your responsibility and then forgiving yourself forgiving yourself and forgiving others when they offend you so yeah. Great comment. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you guys. Get out there, make it a great week and enjoy your next level.